baby, can you swim away this afternoon? Coast is clear, wanna see you real soon. Things ain't working out way you plan. Oh man, in this section we're going to show you how to start putting all of this stuff together. Uh, this is my own particular version of it. There's a lot of different ways you could do this, and we're just going to give you some ideas. Uh, show you how I'm putting it together and then you can go and, and start exploring it on your own. Basically the first one, let's take a look and see how we can combine the blues dancing to the tango. So it's kind of, should be pretty obvious that um, the side to side movement that we did in the beginning of the blues dancing thing that we put the fish tails and the shake and bake and the hesitations and all of that in there is the same side to side movement as you do in tango. So if you're doing the fishtails, it's not much of a stretch to go ahead and say, okay, now I'm going to go do tango. And to make this clear, I just have to make sure that when I launch off that I lift to tell her that we're going to be doing ochos. And when I'm going back and doing ochos, at any time that I'm going to go to the side, right here, if I'm doing the turning movements, right there, she's going to be going to the side. So if she's going to the side, I can sync that and start doing the blues movements again. So we, I step, we just started doing tango, we do some turning, and now when I wanted to go back to the blues movements, I lifted again and sunk so that she clearly would know that I want to change to something different here. When we're doing the tango movements, I'm just sort of moving her with direction. After we do the initial um, starting the ocho, I'm not really lifting much anymore. But if I want to say go back to blues, I'm going to lift and set her down into it to start the blues type of movements. And if I want to go to tango, here, I'm pulling her into a forward ocho. So we were doing the blues movements, and then I said, okay, I want to do tango, so I'm going to turn and pull her forward. I don't have to do as much lifting there because the back ochos, you tend to need to be a little bit more clear about that, but there's no other thing that she can do. If I'm going side to side here, and I step back or I put this pressure on her back to come forward, she's going to cross her feet forward in that case. And anytime I go to the side, I can switch back to the blues. So this is this is a connection point between these two dances. And because of the way we're doing our tango and the way we're doing our blues, we can make this connection. Um, our tango is not close embrace uh, traditional tango. Our tango is loose. It's, it's closer to Tango Nuevo, which is the, a new form of tango that is, it has a lot of loose structure in the embrace. They go into close embrace, but we're not in close embrace here. And generally, when Tango Nuevo people are doing their turning and their ochos, they're in a very loose embrace. If you see dancers like Fabian Salas, he's very loose when he's doing this. And that is the same kind of thing that we want when we're doing blues. That same kind of loose connection. So, because of that, we can connect these two dances together. So try that one. 
um, to connect blues to swing. Um, that's pretty easy to do as well. Um, blues is going to, we showed you the blue circle earlier. So the blue circle was when I came in close and turned around. And then we sank back out of it to go to the side to side movement again. Uh, what I want to do is add that blue circle into a whip. So to do that, if I'm doing a whip, I can one, two, three, and four. This is the same position as I would have if I'm going into a blue circle. If I pull her closer at that four point, we're in exactly that same position. Then I can start turning. And when I want to go out of this, we're still basically in that same position as a whip, and I can turn and send her out at the end of the whip. So this would look like this. I'm going to put a, a blue circle in the middle of a whip. So I start off with a whip. One, two, three, and four. I step in for the blue circle. And when I want to go out of it, I send her out in the same way as I would at the end of a whip. I'm basically taking the whip, cutting it in half, and inserting the blue circle in the middle of it. And I can do that because the connection points are there. One, two, three, blue circle. And when I'm on, I'm thinking when I'm on this foot, which is the position where I want to be to send her out for a whip, when I'm turning in this blue circle and I feel I'm going onto this foot, I know that that's a point that I can use to send her out through the whip. The motion, the turning, is in the same direction as the whip, so it works perfectly with the whip. You don't have to do a bunch of turns like that. Usually when I do this, I just do one, two, just three or four turns and send her back out again. But really you can do as many as you want. So that's one way of connecting blues movements in with the swing movements. Let's take a look, or another way actually would be like this. Again, the, four, the middle position of a whip. If I, if I bring her in, step, step, triple, step, you notice this is the same position as we use when we do the side-to-side -side blues movement. So all I got to do is say, okay, I'm doing a whip, I want to go back to blues. If I'm clear about my movements, if I stop her, and I've shifted her weight. If I go to the side, she'll know we're not doing a whip anymore. And she'll just follow uh, along with the movements. Any of the swing movements, we can do this. If I do a underarm turn, step, step, triple, step. I just change the underarm turn to go into the same position as we had in a whip. So now, I can go to the blues. And then if I want to go back to swing, when I go to this side, I'm in the position for a whip, so step, step, triple step. One, two, three, and four. Let's go into blues, doing our fishtail. And then we want to send her back out. Here we are, one, two, three, and four.